really back on the ground. <gasps> the Dragon of Light! The what? Good grief. Velvet's recklessness rubbed off on him. Hasn't it, Lapisette? Huh? Is that really Lafayette? But how? That is his Empyrean form. It's also proof of his determination. Like an oath? Yes. Do I frighten you now, Eleanor? Mm. Not at all. You've matured into a fine man. So was that flame? Your true power as an Empyrean? Demons. Malevolence. Did that fire get rid of it all? No. I'm still very much a demon. Huh. The Silver Flame has the power to cleanse a soul of its malevolence and change a demon back into a human. But it doesn't have the power to change people's hearts. It just gives them another chance at life. Isn't that right? Sorry. Looks like my sins run too deep to fix. That's fine. It's a part of who you are, Rokuro. You're still a softie, aren't you? Well, that's just great. Huh? Most of the exorcists are wiped out, but the evil and chaos in people's hearts lives on. Gonna be tough going from here on out, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will. Even still. Humanity will never lose its hope, or its prayers for a better future. Well said! The Malachim have free will again. Some may even lend you their aid to help create this ideal future of yours. I will spread the word. This world is now under the protection of the Empyrean Lafayette. Um, would you mind not calling me that? I don't think it really fits who I am now. I guess you're right. That was Velvet's name for you. Okay, what should we call you then? Call me by the name Eleanor gave me. One who lives. That's what said means. Translated into the ancient language. made it to the end. Damn. So, as always, let's do a review. Um, so, having been a while since I've completely played through a Tales game, this was definitely up to par with what I was wanting and what I was expecting. Um, you know, the last, the last one I played all the way through, as I mentioned all the way back at the start of the series, was Tales of Zestria, and then we tried doing, um, actually no wait, not Tales of, no it was Tales of Vesperia, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm mixed up. Uh, Vesperia was the last one I played all the way through, and we tried to play Zestria on stream, and I think we got like two, three hours into it, and it was just, it was just too damn slow, and Sori was like the most unlikable little twit. I was just like, I can't do this. This this game's ass is dragging. Whereas this picked up and got going pretty fast. Um, so, definitely good job there, Bamco. Um, Story-wise, put it at 9 out of 10. Because there were definitely some, like, kind of cliche things. You know, like the whole, oh, the betrayal and Artorius betrayed you, but he actually he, he did it because of the the loss of of um, you know the loss of his unborn child in Celica. And what you didn't know was that Lafayette willingly sacrificed himself, and it's, your whole struggle's been in vain. Like it was kind of like a, yeah, I kind of had a feeling something like this was coming. But even then, I think they still did a really good job, especially in the, the delivery of the story. 
So, kudos to him for that. Um, combat, fucking awesome. I, I absolutely love this style of combat where you can chain your combos together. I feel like there was even more to it that I didn't quite pick up. Because I know you're able to do, like, I think you could use block dashes to chain combos. And I think that's what I was supposed to do to get to, like, you know, 10 plus combos with, uh, with, like, Mogilu or Lafacet to be able to execute their moves. So I kind of regret not pulling that off. Um, but, you know, even then, um, I mean, the system is in place. It's not really... Can't, can't blame the game for me not fully taking advantage of everything the system offers. Um, as for character difference, I mean, each character is definitely unique. I do think that Rokuro was kind of the weakest of the bunch from a gameplay perspective. And I was talking about this in an episode, like two or three episodes ago, but... You know, Rokuro fills the role of a, a tank slash counter-attacker if you will, with his ability to, you know, basically uh, parry through an attack and then, and then he does his counterattack. But that whole idea isn't really needed, and it, it gives him more of a counterplay style versus a pure aggression style, whereas, you know, this just by design, you benefit greatly from an aggressive playstyle. Like, with Velvet, in a sense, you were just a health steal tank, similar to, like, a Blood Death Knight in WoW or something. Like, at the end there with Artorias, you know, just juggling the soul bottles, and once I started just using Consuming Claw through every move he did, I mean, we were able to take down, um, you know, we, we got Armatized Artorias down pretty much with ease once I started doing that, because the health gain coming in was offsetting any damage he could do, and then just constantly raining into him with combos allowed me to, to keep breaking more souls off him and just create like a perpetual cycle of get more souls consumed, get more souls consumed. So, I mean, it gives Velvet an incredibly strong, um, I go as far as to say as overpowered playstyle. Um, I think I like how Aizen fights. Aizen, you know, got a good, a, a, you have casting available, you still have a really strong melee suit. And then I do like his combinations of you get the knockdown and you can immediately follow it up with a dive and then chain that into more combos. That was good. Um, Eleanor kind of felt like an alternative Aizen, just working with the spear and the same thing with like the casting and the melee combos. But I don't know. I feel like if I had to choose between the two, I think I like Aizen more. Um, moving on from those two, obviously I didn't do much of Magadu and Lafacet with them being the caster focus. But I still think it's good that, that they were there, you know? So it's like you have the, you know, if somebody wants to play um, Pure Caster, they of course have that as an option available, which is nice to see. Um, music, music was great. I mean, there were a couple times where I felt the tracks didn't really fit all that well. Like, of course the end when we were in the town and we were getting ready to go to the domain, it still had the like, you know, happy-go-lucky music, and I was kind of like, eh, I don't think this really fits, you know, maybe we should have something a little bit more intense leading up to the final fight, and obviously we saw that once we got into the, the Cosmic Earth Pulse and Imanatsu Domain and all that, but leading up to it, it was very just like, doo, 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 like, you know, just, like, nothing's the matter, um, but I mean, overall, I think the music itself was really well done, um, I would have liked to see more optional outfits. Like, I mean, at first I was getting cool stuff from the cat's chest, and then it started just kind of leaning more towards Norman outfits. Like, I mean, I like the cool things you can put on the characters, but the Norman outfits I feel just look kind of fucking goofy. So, I feel like that was kind of meh. I would have very much preferred to actually have, you know, more funny outfit things versus just the, the dumb looking Norman outfits with giant heads. Um, let's see, what else to talk about? Let's think about some weaknesses here. So, I mean, main weaknesses of the game. Um, in my opinion, Rokuro's fighting style, which I already touched on that. Um, and one thing somebody, I think this is something I overlooked, and someone mentioned that if I had kept investigating all the people that had uh, exclamation points, that would have eventually led to and unlocked the other administrative zones. But 
I feel like, you know, early early on in the playthrough, like within the first 15 episodes or so, every time I saw one of those exclamation points, I was going over and I was investigating, and every single one of them ended up being nothing. It was just like a little quick bit of information, like, oh yeah, this is happening in the world. And, you know, okay, whatever, it's cool to get that info, but none of them unlocked, like, a side quest or, or you know, gave me a hint where treasure was at or zone or anything. So because of that, it's like a learned response. So even if later on in the story, continuing to talk to those things would have unlocked the other administrative zones, the early on ones did nothing. So because of that, by the time I was like halfway through the game, I already had this, this you know, response of seeing them and just being like, those aren't anything, and let me just fucking ignore them. Um, so I feel like that's kind of a fault of the game there. It would have been nice to see see early on, like, cause, I mean, maybe there was a ton of side quests behind those. Like, as we ended the game, there were the side quests to collect all the things for uh, the, the dolls, to collect those. Um, there were the aberrant zones that I, I guess I could have hunted down, and there were a couple more hunts left. That was it. And, I mean, Tales games are always more about the, the centralized story, but it would have been nice to have a little bit more side quest. Even if it was just like, even if each character had a, their own dedicated side quest, like, you know, Eisen's was collecting the things, maybe there's, I don't know, one with Magilu where she wants to get some Forbidden Tome or some bullshit. Um, and, you know, there might very well be something like that in the game, and I was unaware of it, but the point is, ignoring, if it was behind those exclamation marks, you know, I already had this learned response to ignore them from getting nothing early on in the game. So, I feel like there could have been a better approach taken to unlock or at the very least present side content that was available. All in all, though, I would probably... I mean, I, I don't like giving a game a perfect score, but this is, for a JRPG, this is about as close to being perfect for me as it could get. This would be like a 9.5 out of 10 for me. Like, enjoy the story, solid length here, we're ending at, uh, what, 80 episodes? Like, well done. Oh, more animated sequences. The game needed more animated sequences like this. Definitely knock it down to a 9, because there weren't enough animated sequences. This is not the end of chaos. It is the beginning. <laughs> Mankind will go on fighting without end. Dual great sorts. <laughs> Just as they did. I guess Aizen is the captain now? Every laugh, there will be tears. So Eleanor's basically got like her own little family now. You got grandma, you got mom and dad, and a little girl. This world is cruel and unforgiving. 
Hey, come on. <laughs> Even the gods the themselves don't know what the future will bring. It has elf ears. The elf ears fit so well. Got to see what was behind her underneath the hat. <laughs> Nevertheless, I will always believe in them, though. Inhumanity, both strong and weak. Inhumanity, both fearsome and kind. The day will finally come when your dream becomes reality. Until then. I will kindle a flame within me, burning strong and bright. And I will live! Sending the silver flame thing out like once a day? Damn, Lava Set. Yeah, but the for real though, I forgot about that. Like the animated sequences, the game needed way more animated sequences, I think. There were so many parts that would have been top notch if they were animated. Anyway, you can now save your data and later load it playing from just before the final battle. Additionally, new game plus is now available. Right, pretty uh much what we'd expect. Oh, it's a fucking Twitch stream that was unmuted itself for some reason. I was like, this does not sound like it. It's... <laughs> oh, well. Either way, guys, that is going to wrap up our journey of Tales of Berseria. So, hope you enjoyed joining me for this one. Definitely glad I took the time to play through this. Um, I'll see you guys in another week with something brand new, considering the amount of games we have on the horizon. Thank you.